वेलकम आफ्टर लर्निंग अबाउट द फंडामेंटल्स ऑफ द फ्रिक्शन फैक्टर कैलकुलेट डिटर्मिनेशन एंड द प्रेशर टू डिटर्मिनेशन इन द पाइपलाइंस, वी शैल नाउ बी लुकिंग इनटू द मोर अबाउट द फ्रिक्शन फैक्टर्स व्हिच आर देयर इन द एक्सप्रेशंस फॉर द फ्लो रेट एंड दीज फ्रिक्शन फैक्टर एक्सप्रेशंस हैव बीन सजेस्टेड बाय वेरियस रिसर्चर्स फॉर वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ फ्लो रेजिम्स फॉर वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ सिस्टम्स सो वी शैल बी लुकिंग इनटू दोज व्हिच आर यूज्ड for the natural gas systems and in this first we shall see the colbrook white expression and in this we find that in the fps system for a nonce number more than 4000 it is given by this particular expression so in this we find that uh, the diameter and the uh, roughness factor is given in terms of inches and uh, so and this particular expression is we find that this first term is signifying the roughness effect and the second term is signifying the effect the reynolds number effect and this expression is implicit in friction factor so that we need to use some kind of numerical technique to find out the value of the friction factor for example you may use the newton raphson method and similarly the same equation can be given in terms of si unit and in this case we have to use the appropriate units for the roughness factor and the the diameter of the pipeline and this is the expression we get for the friction factor again in an implicit manner now for the american gas association that is aga there is another equation for the uh, uh, this reynolds number and this is given in terms of the uh, this friction factor and this we know that this is uh, for a rough pipe and here we have for partially turbulent flow we have this particular expression and mind it that all these things are in the fps units okay then that is how this particular quotient this 1.412 or 3.7 they are coming due to the particular uh, uh, this uh, this expression of this unit system and in this case the pipe transition factor for the smooth pipe is given by this particular thing this fs is coming over here so fs is given in terms of reynolds number and again we find this fs is is coming as a, a implicit way so again we need to solve using some kind of numerical technique to find out the value of the fs and here with the drag factor which is coming in this expression of the friction factor this drag factor is generally given on the depending on bend index if so there are depending on number of bends in the pipeline and this bends cause the form drag so this uh, change in the direction cause the form drag so this form drag will depend on the number of bends we have in the pipeline and uh, in this particular table we find the bend index have been given for various types of angles of the direction that 5 to 10 degree 60 to 80 degree 200 to 300 degree so these are various types of uh, bends available and these are the various types of pipeline and depending on the type of the material of the construction we find that we have different types of bend index so this drag factor will depend on the the bend index and now we have another uh, equation that we call the pan handle equation and this equation is for natural gas pipelines and fps system this is the particular expression of the pan handle a now please understand you don't have to need to remember these expressions that you should be aware of the various types of expressions available in literature and whenever needed you can just refer to these expressions directly from the literature and find out so there is no need to really uh, memorize these expressions so you will find in this expression that depending on this fps system of unit this particular constant has been given this value and here we find that we have a pipeline efficiency which is less than 1 and then we have the standard temperature pressure the inlet and outlet pressures and this es is as we found out taking care of the elevation effect and again we have all the compressibility factor length of the pipeline and the gas gravity now again uh, we can give the same thing that the friction uh, this uh, transition factor can be given in terms of this thing uh, that it is again depending on the uh, the efficiency pipeline efficiency and this is the volumetric flow rate the inside diameter and the gas gravity this is the transmission factor and now the same thing pan handle a equation is given in terms of the si units and again you find that this particular value has changed and rest of the things 
remain the same and again we find that the transmission factor value is given by this and again this expression has changed a bit due to the change in the um, particular constant. Now, we have another equation that is the panhandle B equation and this panhandle B equation is kind of a revised form of the panhandle A equation and this is generally used for large diameter and high pressure transmission lines. So, in this case in the FPS system the panhandle B equation is given by this factor. You can see that the basic structure of the equations remain the same only differences come in the values of the various types of the coefficients used in this particular expressions. So, uh, only the values have changed because of some change in the uh, some more physics have been taken into account in this panhandle B equation. We are not going to detail of this and this is the uh, expression for the transmission factor. And similarly, we have the panhandle B equation for the SI units and this is the expression for this particular equation. Now, another popular method is wave mouth equation and this wave mouth equation is used for high pressure pipelines and for example, also we may use used for compressed air. So, in this case for FPS system of units, we find this is the expression for the volumetric flow rate by the panhandle expression and here again we find uh, the similar the equation looks similar to the panhandle A or panhandle B only thing is this here the values of the coefficients have been changed. And then this is the this wave mouth equation for the SI units again we find that the values of these coefficients has uh, undergone some changes. There is another equation that is the Spitz glass equation and this is generally used for low pressure line in the sorry this is very complex the low pressure line will be there. So, this is the expression for the uh, Spitz glass equation and in this case we find that we have this H is the frictional head loss in inches of water column and this is the gas gravity and the value of the K is given in terms of the inside diameter of the pipeline and the similar expression is given for the SI units again the you see that this particular value and these coefficient values have changed for the different types of units and so has the value of this particular coefficient. So, and this is if we find the value of this um, H in terms of the kilopascal it can be derived that H this is the uh, this H in terms of millimeter of water column and then this is by dividing by 102 we get the value of the in terms of the kilopascal. So, we can also convert this uh, kilopascal if you are given kilopascal you can convert it into terms of the uh, water column uh, or vice versa. Now, whenever we have so many equations with us uh, the question comes that how to choose the right expression for our system and uh, we can have a look at uh, these uh, predictions of the say downstream pressure by taking some typical values and see that how the various types of equations are predicting the values. So, here to compare this what we have done that we have taken a standard uh, volumetric flow rate to be 100 million standard cubic feet per day. The efficiency factor we take took to be 95 percent, then the P standard pressure is 14.7 psia that is about 1 atmosphere and this is taken as 16 degree Fahrenheit that is about 15.6 degree centigrade. The actual temperature is taken to be 80 degree Fahrenheit. This is the actual pressure at the inlet side that is 1400 psig and the length of the pipeline is 100 miles and d is the uh, diameter inside diameter pipe is 15.5 inches. Now, please understand the inlet pressure has been given in terms of the gauge pressure. So, before you use any of the expressions to find out the flow rate or the friction factor, you have to first convert this gauge pressure into the absolute pressure and in this case you simply add 14.7 that is the ambient pressure to this uh, particular pressure and get the absolute pressure. Now, once you put the absolute pressure, you can use those e various expressions to find out the downstream pressure. Now, you can see that depending on the distance that how the downstream pressure is changing. So, it has been done over a distance of 0 to 100 mile and what we find that initially all of them are starting from the same value and for small distances 
the predictions are almost similar. So, for we find that over a small distance, it does not matter which type of expressions we are using. But as the distance keeps increasing, we find that there are some changes in the values of the downstream pressure. That is, the frictional loss in the pipelines are calculated differently by the different expressions. And in this case, we find that the prediction of the panhandle B is the highest and the waymouth is lowest. So, that means, waymouth is giving me the maximum pressure drop and the panhandle B is giving the minimum pressure drop among these various expression. And what it means? It means that if we are using the waymouth equation, then we shall be having a com compressor which will be, which should be giving me the very high, which can handle very high pressure drops. So, in a way that waymouth equation is giving me very conservative estimate of the pressure drop, because we will needing a higher capacity compressor or higher compressor which, which can handle more delta P, which can give us more pressure ratio, that kind of compressor we shall be using if we are using the waymouth equation. Now, in a similar manner, what we can see that we can also find out the other way. That means, now in this case, we are given the outlet pressure okay? and from that, we are we want to know what is the inlet pressure. So, in this again, we find that the, this, is, this is the range of the flow rates and now we are putting in terms of flow rate and length is taken to be a constant and this is some other diameter of the pipeline and again the pipeline efficiency is taken to be 95 percent. Now, in this case again we are using the different types of expressions and again we find that panhandle A is giving the lowest whereas, waymouth is giving the highest. So, in both the cases wherever whether we are trying to find out the inlet pressure from the given outlet pressure or outlet pressure from the given inlet pressure, the waymouth equation is always giving us the highest pressure drop that is the most conservative estimate. And it is always good that we take some conservative estimate to design or to choose the compressor. So, generally we may take the waymouth equation to have the compressor. Now, after knowing these pressure drops, we go to the pipe sizing and this pipe sizing what we mean that we have to decide that what kind of diameters of the pipeline to choose for a given length. So, this pressure drop through the district gas distribution system should be limited to about 10 percent of the inlet pressure. So, this is the kind of a thumb rule we follow to design the pipe pipe size to design the pipelines. Okay. So, we do not want to exceed 10 percent of the inlet pressure. That means, if the suppose the inlet pressure is say 1000 bar or 800 bar. So, we will not like to have the 10 percent of the that is we do not want to have more than 100 bar of pressure drop inside the pipeline. Okay. And the pipe sizing is based on the flow rate and pressure drops to all the pipes, fittings and valves and it is done using some table that list capacity of different pipe sizes and lengths based on the available gas pressure. So, these are the ways to find out the size of the pipe. Now, here we find that to, uh, the table gives us equivalent lengths of valves. So, you see that we have gate valve, globe valve, angle valve and various types of valves and then we have the sometimes of fittings. So, we, depending on the type of valve or uh, fitting we choose, we have some equivalent length, straight length. Okay. Now, for example, a 2 inch 90 degree elbow, 2 inch that means, we go to the uh, elbow type of joint and we find there is the elbow and the 90 degree. So, we find the equivalent length is 30. So, that L by D ratio is 30. So, we take this L by D ratio 30 and because 2 inch we multiply by 2 inch. So, we get the equivalent length to be 60 inch. That means, a 90 degree standard elbow is the kind of pressure drop it will give is equivalent to a straight pipeline of the same material of 60 inch length. Now, in this particular table what you find that we have been given the various types of length and the nominal pipe sizes and we find that the capacities in the pipeline has been given. So, here we find that uh, this is and you will find this kind of table is given for different types of pipeline and here this is for the nominal pipe sizes the, and in this particular bracket we have been given in the inside diameter and this is the inches of schedule 40 pipe. Schedule 40 is the schedule number signifies the 
thickness of the pipeline and the from the nominal diameter we have for different nominal diameters we are given different size of outside diameter and the schedule number gives the thickness of the pipeline. So, with these two uh, knowledge we can find out the inside diameter of the pipeline. So, here we find this 0 0.5, 0 0.75, 1 etcetera they are given the nominal pipe size and it has been calculated for the particular schedule number the calculated that this bracket in find the inside diameter of the pipeline. So, we find that these are the capacities for this particular that is you can read it like this that if we have a pipeline of 0 0.5 uh, nominal diameter and this 40 uh, schedule is 40 then for the pipeline of this so this is the capacity of this is given in terms of standard cubic feet per hour so, is the capacity of the pipeline. So, this is how we can find out the allowable capacity in various types of pipe sizes. And also, since the capacity depends on the specific gravity, this has been given for a value of 0.6. Now, the this table gives some approximate gas capacity, and more accurate capacity is obtained by in some speed glass or wave mouth equation, which we have given. And this is again the uh, speed glass expression for the FPS systems, which uh, I have already mentioned. So you can find out this. You can use this speed glass equation to find out the actual capacity in the pipeline. So, this is in the SI unit the same space gas expression which I have shown earlier and this is the wave mouth equation to find out the capacity and this as we said that the wave mouth equation is used for higher um, uh, flow rate and the space gas or lower flow rate. And this is for the FPS system and this is for the SI system of unit. And now, we come to the minor losses and as I told you when I say minor loss, minor loss does not mean that their magnitudes are less than the major loss, but the name, name has been given to differentiate them from the actual pipe length. So, here we have the valves, fittings, entry and exit losses across the fittings etcetera and relatively small compared to frictional losses inside the pipelines. Why? Because they are not used so rampantly as we use the long pipeline. We, we want to have as long pipeline as possible, but in between we need for control purpose and sometimes the pipeline do not come in the finite length. So, we need to join the pipelines. So, that is and we also sometimes we need to change the direction of the flow. So, for this we only need the fittings and the valves. So, these are not coming in a very large quantity. So, that is why the total pressure drop offered by these fittings and valves do not generally match with the pressure drop we find across the whole uh, straight pipeline system. And they may be determined in a various manner the kind of pressure drop we have kind of, uh, some sometimes we can use equivalent rent, some resistance factor or some k factor. And we shall see that uh, if uh, sometimes the, the total pressure drop offered by these fittings and this pipe uh, valves may exceed or may become equivalent to the major losses then in that case this minor loss seems to be a misnomer that is it is wrongly said as minor loss. But the name sticks now here we just take a few examples we have just shown you that how to find out the equivalent length for some of the valves and fittings and here we find out how to find out the head loss in a sudden enlargement and this is the expression for the head loss in sudden enlargement. Sudden means that you see that abruptly the, the this one pipeline diameter and in another diameter suddenly the uh, diameter changes from D 1 to D 2 and this A 1 A 2 means A 1 is pi by 4 D 1 square and A 2 is pi by 4 D 2 square okay. and this V 1 is the velocity at this particular thing that is V 1 is equal to Q dot that is volumetric flow rate divided by A 1. Okay. So, from that we can find the V 1. So, this is how we find the uh, head loss in this case of sudden enlargement. And now, we have sudden contraction. Now, here you see that here the initial diameter is again D 1 and is contracting suddenly into abruptly to another cross section that is having a diameter of D 2. Now, in this case we have a slightly improved modified expression and this is come in terms of C C and this is a contraction loss contraction coefficient okay. and this contraction coefficient depends on the ratio of the A 1 and A 2 that is this 
cross section area divided by this area of cross section. So, this if I know this uh, area ratio, then we can find the various values of the contraction coefficient. Okay. And we find that when a 1 is equal to a 2, then we find that this is equal to 1 that is expected that that means, there will not be any kind of loss. Okay. So, this is the that means, this this of 1 and h f becomes 0. Okay. So, that is expected. So, that is why we find that by a 1 by a 2 it is 1 and for 0 it is the lowest value that is we are getting the highest that is the less the c c value the more will be the value of the h f. So, we are getting the lowest value for c c for this when a 1 by a 2 is 0. Okay. Of course, 0 is something uh, means a extreme case we do not get uh, 0 generally and uh, this uh, uh, one thing you must understand this that in this case a 1 a 2 this a 1 in this experiment is given to be more than uh, a 2. So, I it should be rather a 2 by a 1 not a 1 by a 2 it should be a 2 by a 1 because this a 1 by a 2 will be more than 1. So, this is a small correction we have to make here. Now, we have the uh, cases of gradual enlargement and gradual contraction. You see that because of this particular uh, length we are providing to gradually decrease the cross section or increase the cross section and whenever it is gradual the pressure drop will be less. Abruptness gives higher pressure drop, gradual gives lower because the pressure recovery we say the pressure recovery is more when the uh, area of cross section changes gradually. And he will, here we find the expression for both the cases this is the expression for the um, uh, for, uh, for the head loss and here this coefficient c c is found from this particular thing and here you will find that this 2 degree 10 degree 15 degree these are the beta values here. So, depending on this value of this particular angle we find that we have different values of the coefficient and for a given diameter ratio we find this coefficient values e is largest when the beta value is largest. It means that the uh, it means that the the more the this uh, angle we are providing the the more is the head loss that is the steepest the minimum becomes steep it, it is goes goes towards the uh, abrupt change. And uh, these are the various uh, uh, references you may refer to to find out detail about this particular uh, 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 this friction friction etcetera friction factor and the pressure drop etcetera. Thank you.